Russian occupiers complain that in certain areas of the front, the bodies of their fallen comrades are not being evacuated in a timely manner so as not to show the real statistics of losses. Astra reports this with reference to information from war correspondent Yuri Kotenok. Evil tongues say that in one of the static areas, the leadership made a brilliant decision not to take the 200s since this increases the statistics of losses, and for now they lie ownerless, listed as alive or missing in action, Kotenok said. In particular, according to him, the Russians are allowed to evacuate bodies in batches so that a significant number of deaths does not spoil the impression of the successes of the occupiers. They are pulling them out in parts, in measured doses, so that the statistics do not grow. Unfortunately, this is not fiction, but reality, added Kotenok. Astra also writes that relatives of Russian soldiers from the 25th Brigade are complaining, among other things, about the lack of evacuation of the bodies of the dead. Recall Russian soldiers are repeatedly complaining of inept leadership from military commanders in Ukraine, an unwillingness to decentralize decision-making authority and a failure to communicate accurate information are the most consequential weaknesses at the state level that have contributed to the Russian military's subpar performance to date in the war with Ukraine. These characteristics are exacerbated by other historic factors found throughout Russian society which also permeate the military as a reflection of that society. They include an imperialist national identity, endemic corruption and social brutality. To these systemic problems must be added that the inherent difficulties of what the Russian military was supposed to achieve in its first major peer conflict since World War II and elements of simple military incompetence. As Russian troops wage a ferocious house-to-house -house fight for control of strongholds in Ukraine, a parallel battle is unfolding in the top echelons of military power in Moscow, with President Vladimir Putin reshuffling his top generals while rival camps try to win his favor. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Syrsky, said that Ukraine has a realistic plan for the return of Crimea. However, for obvious reasons, the military commander cannot give the details. Retired British colonel Hamish Stephen de Breton Gordon told the 24 Channel that he agreed with the opinion of the Ukrainian lieutenant general. According to him, Ukraine can really deoccupy the peninsula and this will be the end for Putin. The naval forces destroyed the Russian Black Sea Fleet, which was defending Crimea. Ukraine is gaining more and more control over the air, taking into account the new air defense systems and the arrival of the F-16 aircraft in the near future. If Ukraine gains air control over Crimea, this will allow ground forces tanks, armoured personnel carriers, to have the freedom of manoeuvre to liberate the occupied peninsula. I believe that Crimea is definitely within Ukraine's reach in the next few months. Discussion of this is useful because Putin knows that if he loses Crimea, it will be the end for him, the retired British colonel said. Then, in his opinion, a peaceful settlement can be achieved earlier. Therefore, Crimea is definitely in the field of view of the generals in Kyiv and there is a very real opportunity to return it. What can be the deoccupation of the peninsula? Hamish Stephen de Breton Gordon noted that the liberation of Crimea is likely to occur in a combination of land and sea operations, increased pressure on the Russians and long-range strikes. Ukraine apparently would like to return Crimea with the least losses, but this will be a big challenge, said the retired British colonel. Ukraine controls the Black Sea and gets more air control, it becomes quite possible. He is sure that Ukraine wants to return Crimea with the least damage to its troops. That's real. I could not say it six to twelve months ago, the expert stressed.